Welcome back. Indeed, we're covering Bishop Strickland's latest letter. Uh, it, it, about the supernatural faith, but how we need to have a supernatural faith. In one of the sections in your letter, you quoted Pope St. Pius X uh, in 1910 was uh, the, the uh, modernism document that he put out warning the church. This is a document we put on our website at vmpr.org when we started because we thought as a lay organization that VMPR, uh, this would be one of our objectives is to fight modernism and talk about the supernatural faith. And then, lo and behold, a couple of years after we start VMPR, we run into Bishop Strickland. And you seem <laughs> to be on the same page, and it's a marriage made in heaven. But I wanted to ask you, uh, Bishop Strickland, about that section of your of your letter. Um, you said you talked about a devastation of the, the bride of Christ, and um, you mentioned that too many prelates not only exhibit a lack of supernatural faith on their part, but, you know, they are hell-bent on eliminating every vestige of supernatural faith from the church. This has been uh, building momentum over the many decades, but we must open our eyes to this crescendo of apostasy that we're now witnessing. I witnessed it through my own life, and I'm 67 years old. Bishop Strickland, I've seen bishops tell me things about the faith, and I won't take the time to get into it, but they were living a double life. Homosexuality was rampant, and it all came out at the end that this bishop didn't believe in the supernatural grace of the church. He thought it was just a facade, and he didn't have the guts to say, I'll step down. But, you know, I, I pray for his soul. He died. But the point I'm trying to convey is, is that what you're talking about, bishops who just think that they're like administrators rather than shepherds? Absolutely. And, and sadly, it's, um, it's in this country. It's really in the church around the world. I mean, there are good bishops and good priests. Sure. But there are also too many. There should be none. Yeah. And one is too many. Right. But there are many more than one that everything they do, I mean, and, you know, we're not to judge and we pray. I mean, we should absolutely pray for, and I urge anyone, I mean, yeah. when people will talk to me and say, oh, the bishop did this or that, or they're concerned about something from the Vatican. I always urge, we need to pray. We believe in supernatural faith. Yeah. We know that, that the truth is tremendously glorious and beautiful and uh, challenging, but life-giving. So we always need to remember that. Yeah, We need to remember that, as like we say all the time, um, Truth with clarity and charity. Amen. Always remember that charity part that we need to be loving. We need to live our faith in love. I mean, if if we allow the anger to just take hold of us yeah. and we're we're forgetting that all of these bishops are ultimately just men like you and I yeah. that are sons of God. And how, whether they're living up to their call of that sonship or not, that's up to them. Yeah. But so God loves us all. God is wanting the salvation of all of us. And for that reason, the most uh, charitable thing that we can do is when a bishop or a priest says something that we know isn't true, the charitable thing, it, respectfully, but the charitable thing is to say, no, Father, no, Your Excellency. Yeah. Go back to what the faith teaches. Go back to the scriptures. Go back to the teachings through the centuries that are this wonderful deposit of faith. Go back to the truth. Re, I mean, in those terms, again, with this gospel that we read, yeah. graft yourself back into Christ. Yeah. That I mean, we need to very seriously pray yeah. for that kind of conversion yeah. for too many in the church today. Yeah. As I say in this letter, in the Vatican, in the local diocese of wherever we are in the world, in local parishes, if a priest or bishop is saying things that don't ring true with the faith, pray for them Yes, and urge them to they can be. All of us can 
We wander in darkness and all of us make mistakes. We're all sinners, but we can always return. And that's what we need to pray for. Yeah. Um, a great, I mean, I use the word apostasy. That's a strong word. It is. But it needs to be used when the faith is being contradicted right. by people whose job, whose very reason for being is to share the faith and guard the deposit of faith to do the opposite. That's devastating for them, and it's devastating for the church and for the world. Um, so we've got to speak up, and we've got to be clear and know that supernatural faith ourselves. And if I can add one more element, because I experienced this not last Sunday, but the Sunday before when I was sick, uh, that's reparation. So when you hear these things go on, offer your prayers of reparation like Our Lady of Fatima talked about. I had a situation where I my voice was gone, so I went to a noon, day, noon Sunday Mass because I wanted to receive our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I went to a local parish. I won't say where. But the pastor was bragging about the he's the silliest priest in the diocese. That's what I want to go down for, you know, as being the silliest. And then he taught us that there's no difference between transubstantiation, transignification, and transfinalization. He said, how many of you even know the difference? It's not necessary. It's all the same. And I'm sitting in the pew, shaking my head. I can't, my voice is gone. And I said, Jesus, what do you want me to do? I'm guardian angel, enlighten me. Do I stand up with my horse, my voice where I can't speak up? And no, because I've been, I've been around that. I know that that's not going to work. What did I do? I just got down on my knees and I prayed reparation prayers. Yeah, that's all I could do. But you see, this is happening. So for you to make this letter talk about the apostasy, I know many of our listeners have been there at parishes because they call me a lot or they text me or they send me emails describing what happened at their parish. And many times it's just horrendous that this it's like a zoo. But what do you do? My, you know, yes, stand up, write a letter, get to your local bishop. But also at, we're at this point right now of just reparation too. We have to make atonement and pray for the conversion of a priest or a, even a bishop that they will come to know of the fullness of the faith because from what they just said, it indicates a lack of supernatural faith. Yeah, I think that's a critical aspect of what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Because when I was in the seminary, they were, there were professors that would say, oh, the, the multiplication of the loaves oh. and the fishes, that was just people being generous. Oh, that no, was no, no, a miraculous no. event. Um, and we believe in miracles. I mean, that's Act. one way of saying we have supernatural faith. That's right. I mean, it, it don't just assume everything's a miracle, but we believe in miracles. And as, I mean, I, again, Terry, Tell me. it always takes me back to our Lord on the Eucharistic altar. Yes. That is the foundational supernatural faith. Mm -hmm. We know and we believe that that bread and wine does become a who. Mm -hmm. That who is Jesus Christ? Right. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. Yes. If, if you have that faith, and Terry, I've seen it. I know yeah. we've talked about it before. Sure. When people yeah. have that strong Eucharistic faith, oh yeah, they're they're still sinful. I mean, we're all we yeah. struggle, but their lives fall into place. That's right. They come to to embrace all the teachings mm -hmm. of the church. Yep. I would wager that an awful lot of the people out there that say they're not so sure about what what we believe about the Eucharist, and I think it's just a symbol. I would wager that a lot of them are couples that use contraception. No question about it. That's been my a lot of them are families that said, well, it was a difficult situation, and we sent our daughter off to another town to get an abortion. Yeah. I mean, if you don't really believe, then it all falls apart. Yep, it if does. If you do really believe, it all begins to fall into place. And it's glorious, it's beautiful, it's joyful, it fills us with hope. And that's why, I mean, I know that's what keeps both of us going. Got that right. Because it's such a wondrous truth Amen. that God has revealed to us. Yeah. 
as Christ says in the gospel, if the stones will shout his name, if we don't, that creation will proclaim the glory of God if humanity doesn't do the job right. and proclaim who God is <laughs> because it's too wondrous. Exactly. I love that comment. That is so beautiful. Think about what you just said about the, the, the nature will proclaim it. And it does proclaim it every morning when you see the sun come up. 